feeling no shit. I'm a beast. I'm a beast. Picking up work, need a hard hat. I'm a beast. Picking up work, need a hard hat. I'm a beast. January 12th, 1998. Accused drug kingpin, Nate Hill was back in custody in Chicago on Sunday, more than two years after he was indicted here and months after he had established himself as an apparently successful businessman in the West African country of Ghana. The break in the hunt for Hill alleged to be a major supplier of drugs to Chicago street gangs came when the U.S. Marshal Service learned of someone who had been in contact with Hill in Ghana. Through a check of telephone records, investigators came up with Hill's location in the capital of Conakry. The United States Department's Diplomatic Security Service then played a crucial role performing the often delicate task of working with the impoverished country's National Police Force to apprehend Hill. Hill, who was 31, was arrested last Wednesday at his business in Conakry without incident, ending the long search for one of the top 15 most wanted fugitives sought by the United States Marshal Service according to Deputy U.S. Marshal John O'Malley, Jr. O'Malley, who was in charge of the worldwide search and one of the four marshals to bring Hill back to Chicago, said Sunday that Hill claimed to have lived in Guinea for much of the last 25 months that he had eluded authorities. Authorities say that for a time he also resided in the Bahamas with three girlfriends and four children by them and briefly visited Chicago in November of 1996 in his only confirmed sighting while on the run. In Guinea, Hill operated a business selling tons of coffee and coca to European suppliers using the alias of Malik Ba. He was a very successful businessman over there. Several other businessmen on the flight back to Chicago came up to him and said hello. He had some contacts there with some influential people, which even made it more of a sticky situation. It was another wholesale business and an illegal commodity that got Hill into trouble in Chicago. The native Chicagoan was indicted here in December 1995 on charges that he supplied more than three tons of cocaine to two of Chicago's largest street gangs, the Gangster Disciples and Vice Lords, since 1987. Hill wasn't in Chicago at the time of the indictment which initially was sealed and went on the run after hearing of the charges. Since then, two dozen of his co-defendants, including Elisha Tapes, one of the girlfriends who lived with him while both were fugitives, have been convicted of drug charges. He who allegedly directed the murders of a man he regarded as a threat and a worker he suspected of stealing drug money face up to life imprisonment if he is convicted. Even after his disappearance, Hill is believed to have continued to run his business by telephone for the first six months of 1996. Authorities received a tip from a confidential informant that tapes had left Hill and had returned to the United States. With deputy marshals hot on her trail, tape surrendered to the authorities. She agreed to cooperate and is expected to be a key witness against Hill when he goes to trial. 
Authorities then learned that someone on the East Coast had been in contact with Hill. When that person's telephone records showed calls going to a number in Conakry, Ghana, officials brought in the State Department last August. Its little-known diplomatic security service has agents serving in 103 embassies and consulates around the world. In most of these outposts, Ghana included, these regional security officers, as they are called, act as the sole representatives of United States law enforcement. The State Department Security Office currently in Conakry also proved to be vital, working with the Ghana National Police officials with whom he had developed relationships and could trust. So you see, Nate Hill was an alleged drug dealer. Nate Hill was a successful businessman who was now locked up in the United States federal system. Free Nate Hill. Need a hard hat. I'm a beast. Picking up work, need a hard hat.